Hello everyone. In today's video, we're going to take a look at problems on single phase half wave control rectifiers. So let's get started. The first problem is for the circuit shown in figure, if the average output voltage is 50 volt, then find the firing angle. So they've given this as the circuit diagram. The first and foremost important thing that you need to make a note of is what configuration is this circuit in. If you carefully observe from what we have seen, this is in RL plus freewheeling diode configuration, isn't it? So we've seen the complete analysis for this particular circuit in the previous case. So now they're asking us to find the firing angle alpha. How do we find the firing angle? We know that average output voltage average output voltage for RL plus freewheeling diode is given by Vm by 2 pi into 1 plus cos alpha. Isn't it? This is based on the derivation that we have already done. I'm just using this expression directly. I hope this point is clear. Now they have mentioned that the average output voltage is 50 volt and they have given this Vm to be equal to 200. So we can write Vm is actually 200. And Vout average they have given directly as 50 volt, isn't it? Now when we are substituting this in the formula, we can write 50 is equal to 200 divided by 2 pi into 1 plus cos alpha, isn't it? So now simplifying this particular expression, we will be getting alpha to be equal to 55.19 degree. This is the firing angle for average output voltage of 50 volt. I hope this point is clear. So this is how we need to approach these type of problems. So now let's move on to our problem number two. So in problem number two, what we have is that an SCR is used to control a power of one kilowatt, 230 volt, 50 hertz heater. Determine the heater power for firing angle of 45 degrees and 90 degrees. So they've given us a hint that only one SCR is used, an SCR is used is what they're saying. And they have mentioned the power, it is used to control a power of one kilowatt. In the sense, the load is basically one kilowatt. So what they're trying to say is that we have an SCR and we have a heater load that is basically a resistive load, isn't it? They've given this power to be equal to one kilowatt. So this is basically a half wave control rectifier with R load, isn't it? The configuration, if you carefully see. So now how do we solve this particular problem? Now, the first and foremost important thing is for a resistive load, the expression for RMS value of output voltage is what we have to make a note of because that is required in this particular problem. So the RMS value of output voltage is given by, we have seen this in our analysis. So Vm by two root pi into pi minus alpha plus sine two alpha by two square root. Now we need to find out the RMS value of voltage. That is what is the RMS value of voltage when we are having a firing angle of 45 degrees. So that is when alpha is equal to 45 degrees. Now let us start substituting all these values. So V out RMS is equal to Vm. One of the most commonly made mistakes is that students will take Vm as 230. That is not the case because that is Vs. So we need to multiply it with root two in order to determine Vm, isn't it? Divided by two root pi into 45, that is pi by four, pi minus pi by four plus sine 90 degree, that is basically equal to one whole square root. When you're substituting this 
and solving this expression you will be getting V RMS is basically equal to 155 volt it's just direct substitution so be careful while doing that now one important thing that you have to observe is that they have, they have given the power to be equal to 1 kilowatt isn't it when the power is given equal to 1 kilowatt we can find the resistance out of it isn't it that is resistance is equal to 230 square that is v square by power that is p so we know that p is equal to v square by r isn't it so if you are using that particular formula you will be getting 52.90 ohms this is the resistance value that they are using in this particular circuit so resistance is equal to 52.90 ohms now what they have asked us to find they have asked us to find the heater power so heater power is basically the value p we have to find at 45 degree heater power at 45 degree again we know that this is basically given by v square by r isn't it what is the v square at 45 degrees we have found it as 155 155 square divided by 52.9 simplifying this we will be getting 454.15 watts 454.1 watts is the power that is associated with 45 degrees now what happens when alpha is 90 degrees when alpha is 90 degrees we will be able to find out p 90 degree directly isn't it that is v square by r so for v square again you have to substitute like the same way that we had done that is for 45 degrees what will happen or for 90 degrees what will happen in this expression and find out the new value of v out r so we will be getting the new value of v out r to be equal to 115 i will leave it to you to solve this so you will be getting 115 whole square divided by 52.9 so you will be getting 250 watts so this is how you need to solve these type of problems now let's move on and focus towards our problem number three our problem number three is as follows a single phase half wave controlled converter is operated from a 120 volt 50 hertz supply load resistance they have given as 10 ohms if the average output voltage is 25 percent of the maximum possible average output voltage determine firing angle rms and average output currents so this is again a very simple problem we need to first write the given data so let us segregate this into two portion first let us write the given data what do we have we have vs to be equal to 120 volt and the frequency is 50 hertz and we have load resistance r to be equal to 10 ohm and the average output voltage v out average is equal to 25 percent of v out average max isn't it so when do we find the maximum output voltage is what we have to see and before that first we have an r load in this case isn't it we don't see any other data that is given so for an r load can we write v out average the expression to be equal to vm by 2 pi into 1 plus cos alpha again this expressions we have derived in the past so in case you want to understand how this expression is arrived please to watch the previous videos so to find v out average max so v out average max can be obtained when alpha is equal to zero degrees isn't it the reason is because when we are having one complete cycle like this and you want the average output voltage only when alpha is at zero you will be able to get maximum amount of voltage because it is starting at this interval suppose if you are starting at this interval you will only have this amount of voltage at the load so that will actually have a reduced voltage isn't it that is why we will consider alpha to be equal to zero degrees 
and when we are doing that what is that we will be getting v out average max is what we will be getting so v out average max in that case will be equal to vm by pi because cos 0 will be equal to 1 1 plus 1 will be 2 2 and 2 cancels out and we will be left out with this particular expression now they have given that according to this particular statement v out average is equal to 25% v out average max so we know v out average this is if we consider this as 2 and we know v out average max isn't it so can we write combining 1 and 2 can we write expression number that is v out average is equal to vm by pi 0.25 times vm by pi is equal to vm by 2 pi into 1 plus cos alpha because from this particular equation v out average we have written as it is and 25 percent of v out max we have considered this so that is why we will be arriving at equation number three now once you are arriving at this equation remaining uh, solution of this problem is very easy so they have given that what is the firing angle that we have to find out the firing angle can be determined by solving the expression so if you solve the previous expression number 3 solving 3 we will be getting alpha to be equal to 60 degrees so one more thing here to make a note of is what will happen to the v out average in terms of vm so we can write v out average will be equal to 0.238 times that of vm so if we solve the previous expressions you will be getting this and this is required because they've asked us the next question as rms and average output currents so the average output current that is to solve the second question the average output current i out average can be simply found out by v out average by r so v out average is basically 0.23 times vm vm is actually root 2 times the supply voltage isn't it 120 into root 2 this is according to the given data and the resistance value they have given is 10 ohms so solving this we will be getting 4.04 amps now the rms value of output voltage v out rms again this we will be getting by solving the expression that is vm by 2 root pi into pi minus alpha plus sin 2 alpha by 2 square root so when we are solving this particular expression we, so we will be able to find out the average output voltage v out rms that is equal to 76.09 volts then what will be equal to i out rms i out rms is basically equal to v out rms by r that is 76.09 whole divided by r the value of r is given as 10 ohms and you will be left out with 7.61 amps i hope you were able to understand how to solve this particular problem so this is a different type again so considering the first two problems this is slightly different to how we approach the previous problem now let's take a look at problem number four which is again unique compared to the three problems we have solved if the half wave control rectifier has a purely resistive load of r and the delay is alpha is equal to pi by three determine rectification efficiency form factor ripple factor transformer utilization factor and peak inverse voltage so now again they have given this is basically a half wave control rectifier with a purely resistive load isn't it so the first and foremost important thing they have asked us is to find the rectification efficiency which is given by the symbol we have pdc by pac so can we write this is equal to v out average square by r by v out rms square by r rr gets cancelled out and we will be left out with v out average square by v out rms square 
Now we need to find the Vout average, Vout RMS values first. So Vout average for a resistive load for a half-wave control rectifier, we have seen it is basically equal to Vm by 2 pi into 1 plus cos alpha. Isn't it? And they've given alpha is equal to pi by 3. When you are simplifying this, you will be getting V out average in terms of Vm, that is 0.239 times of Vm. Let us consider this as 1. Now, V out RMS, again, we know V out RMS for a half wave control rectifier with R load to be equal to Vm by 2 root pi into pi minus alpha plus sin 2 alpha by 2 whole square root. Again, when you are applying alpha is equal to pi by 3, you will be getting V out RMS to be equal to 0.485 times that of Vm. This is expression 2. We know 1 and 2. Can we substitute this in this main equation? So you will be getting rectification efficiency as 0.239 times Vm whole square by 0.485 times Vm whole square. You will be getting rectification efficiency as 24.28%. I hope this point is clear. Now let us look at what is the form factor. Form factor by definition it is given as V out RMS by V out average. So we know the ratio again it is basically equal to 203.3%. Now, what is the ripple factor? Again, ripple factor formula is given as form factor whole square minus one whole root. So when you are simplifying this, you will be getting 177%. Now, the fourth point is they're asking us the transformer utilization factor that is given by PDC whole divided by Vs into Is. So we have seen PDC that is can be written as V out average whole square by R by Ohm's law, isn't it? V square by R. And Vs is basically root 2 times Vm, isn't it? And Is can be written as that is basically the RMS value of current. RMS value of current can we write it as V out RMS whole divided by R. So we have found out V out RMS in terms of Vm and V out average in terms of Vm. Solving this particular equation, we will be getting transformer utilization factor to be equal to 16.6%. The final thing they have asked us is the peak inverse voltage that is basically equal to Vm. So we have the peak inverse voltage to be equal to Vm. I hope this video gave you a clear understanding on how to solve the problems or numericals related to half wave control rectifier. In case you have any questions, feel free to reach out by typing in your questions in the comment section below. Thanks for watching. Stay tuned.